My friends, welcome to this tutorial about creating games with Solaris. In this video number 42, we will make or we will start the inventory menu. So, uh, so far, when you pause the game, which you can do by pressing by default the keyboard key D, it just freezes your hero and actually sometimes it can be hard to understand that the game it is even paused when you press D accidentally. It also stops the enemies and uh, basically everything on, on the map, except animated tiles, by the way. You can see that the water tiles are still animated, but that's a small detail. Um, so what we want to do is, uh, rather than this default pause mode that does uh, absolutely nothing, we want to display a menu and this menu will be a small inventory grid that will allow the player to select items and to assign them to item keys. Um, so we will probably need multiple um, tutorials to cover all of that because there is a lot to do. But, but the first thing to know is that um, there are some events in the API on, on your game um, you can be notified when the player pauses the game, so which means by pressing the pause command, which is D by default uh, with the keyboard. And similarly, when the player tries to unpause the game, then you need to close your pause menu. So yeah, we will create or we will start more exactly a pause menu when we, uh, yeah, when the game is paused by the player and we will stop that menu when the game is unpaused. Okay, so how do we do that? Um, one place to trigger these is in your game manager script. The inventory itself will be um, a menu created by another script that we will write, but from game manager we will call that script. So let's require that script that we haven't written yet and we call, can call it pause menu builder because actually it will be a script that creates and returns a pause menu so let's call it pause pause menu builder or just pause menu maybe um yeah So here we create a game object and we want to initialize it. So we want to specify what happens when the game is paused. And here we start the, the pause menu. So what we can do is actually create our pause menu only once. And to do that, our pause menu builder script will provide a function create and it will need the game um, basically you will see why it, it needs the game but basically um, it will display an, an inventory grid with the items that the player has so it needs the game to know which items you have or not um, okay so this script will basically be a big function create that uh, returns the menu the pause menu and then we can just start our pause menu with the usual menu api that uh, we learned in previous tutorials uh, the first parameter should be the context so the game which means that if the game ever stops the pause menu will also be stopped so we are safe and similarly, when the game is unpaused, sol.menu.stop pause menu. So we create the pause menu only once when the game itself is created, which means that its state, if any, will be kept. In particular, um, it, there will be an inventory grid and the cursor. So nothing will be recreated when you 
unpause the game and you pause it again, it will display the same already existing menu with its state and with the same uh, selected item in particular. Um, we could also recreate it every time the game is uh, is paused. You, there, there, are, there are really a lot of ways to implement a, an inventory menu, so this is just an example and uh, yeah, to, to help you understand how you can do this kind of stuff. Okay, so let's start the main actual thing which is creating this, this script. Um, okay, so it will be... I want it in the menus folder actually. Like the dialog box and some other menus, the title screen, pause menu dot lua. Okay, so as always or almost always, when we create a Lua script, we have a, we make a table and we return that table. That's the convention. So, oops, pause menu builder, and that table will be returned in the end. And it's always a table with some function, but here there will be only one. Of, and it will be a function that creates and initializes the pause menu. So let's call it create, and as I said, it will need the game. Okay, so what does it do? It creates a menu, we call, can call it pause menu. Uh, remember that there is no actual real menu type in Solaris API currently. It's just a table actually, which is a little bit different from the rest of the API. And okay, menus mostly have one function. It's on draw. Oops, pause menu on draw. One event more exactly. So it's a function, a regular function that will be called by the engine as as long as the menu is active. Uh, so at every frame you can draw things. And what do we want to draw? We want to draw basically this grid of squares. And uh, yeah, let's do that. So let's create a square surface. Um, square img we create a surface with some square size and my square size, I want it to be 24 oops, 24 okay, and it will be a very very simple grid of squares and these squares will be filled with a slightly transparent grey color so maybe something like 40, 40, 40, oops So this is, this is some dark gray and we want it to be a little bit transparent. Something like that. And okay, I want I want to test this code already even if it doesn't do much. So let's just draw our square onto the screen at coordinates zero zero just to start and to see if if this works okay not yet apparently what did I do wrong bad argument two to create oh okay I need the width and the height so it's square size and square size again Cool, so I just press D and now I see my square. If I press D again, it disappears. Cool. Okay, it works. Um, but we still have a lot of work. <laughs> Let's say we want to uh, display um, a grid of five by four items with this square size and some spacing of eight pixels between them. 
and okay i said five by four so we can make some other constants number of rows will be four number of columns will be five and with these numbers i can make some computations here to draw my squares um yeah according to to this this grid specification um so time for the the slight headache um where do we draw our squares <laughs> so there will be probably a loop or two loops um for each row so you can write for row equals one to number of rows do um, and same for columns so i will always reuse my square emg img i don't have of course to uh, create um, 20 surfaces here and instead of displaying it at 0, 0, I will display it at some DST X and DST Y coordinates, which can start, um, let's say we can start them at 0, 0 temporarily. So every time I wrote a column, uh, every time I, I, I drew, uh, yeah, the square for one column, I should increase DSTX by uh, the size of my square plus the spacing. Square size plus spacing. Okay. And every time I finish a column, I mean a row, I increase DSTY. And I need to reset dst x to get back to the beginning of the next next line okay so with this i think i should have agreed the only problem is that it will be entirely uh it will not be centered it will be it will start on the top left of my screen yes okay but that's some progress already um okay cool so I need to compute some coordinates here. And these coordinates depend on, yeah, we just want to center. So they depend on the size of my screen and on the total size of my grid itself. So I can compute quite easily the size of the grid. Grid width will be the number of columns uh, multiplied by yeah, for each column, we will have again this uh, square size plus spacing. Uh, minus one spacing, actually, because the size of my grid is, um, yeah, five times the columns. I mean, five times the size of the square, but there are only four holes here if you will so that's why i'll need to remove the width of, of of a hole to compute the total size of my grid oops so grid height similarly will be the number of rows and then the same thing okay so we have the width and height of the grid now we just need the width and height of the uh, of the screen, which is um, we can call this quest width quest height, and we have a function to get these once for all. Sol .video .get quest size. Um, we could also do DST surface get size but here we are um, actually in the in yeah in this part of the script we we don't know yet the DST surface uh, okay cool so
So with this, I can initialize, let's say initial x, initial y. I can compute these based on these sizes. So initial x, in, um, let's say initial DST x to be more precise, destination x and destination y will be um, okay it's half of the screen minus half of the grid that's how I can center my my grid um, if you don't agree <laughs> take take a piece of paper try to write these coordinates and you will see that this should work. And oops, here when I switch, when I go to the next row, I need to restore the STX uh, not to zero, of course, but to initial the STX. And with this, I think we should be good. Okay, so all I did is draw a grid so far, but there are no items, no cursor, so we still have a lot of work. Um, but one thing slightly useless that we are doing is that every frame we are doing these two loops and we are drawing ever, uh, yeah, we are drawing all the time the exact same thing, which does not depend at all on the uh, state of the game. So we could do that earlier like only once we could do uh, a grid surface whose size will be grid height or the si size of the screen actually well actually it could be simpler if I do grid width grid height again there are a lot of ways to do this kind of stuff um, and let, let's put this in in some grid, in so, some separated function, like build grid background. Let's say so. Um, local function build grid background will will do that. then all this code then return grid surface cool so I create this only once at least yeah once per pause menu we could all, we could even do it um, outside the, the the menu creation It really doesn't matter. So grid surface, we want to draw this on the screen. Um, yeah, let's just initialize it with... Um, no, we, we can draw it at initial DSTX, initial DSTY. And it's, it means that I no longer need this here. That's why I said it, it can simpl simplify things. Then I want to rename it because it's no longer the same exact meaning. Sorry for all this refactoring. I hope it's, it is not confusing, but I'm just trying to I'm just to figure out some ways to simplify the code. So this builds a surface uh, that does not have the same size of the screen, but the size of the grid. And we can draw it uh, at these coordinates that we computed. 
does it still work? So I changed nothing except moving some code. Uh, there is some mistake line 22. Yep. I need to draw this at grid, on, on grid surface. Okay. So now my grid background is built only once. Um, even when I pause the game again, it, it will not uh, compute this again because my menu is here. It is not recreated every time we pause the game. But that's that's a very small optimization detail. Um, but still, it's it's cleaner this way, I think. Cool. And then we want to draw all items. Mm, maybe we will do that in some function, some separate function. Draw items uh, onto the surface, and this function will need the game. Local function draw items. Oops, I, I just heard a sound. I got hurt. <laughs> Didn't close the game. Draw items. Uh, so the question is which items? So maybe we will start the file with a list of item names that we want to to have in this in this inventory. Um, so far we only have two equipable items. So the uh, the bow and the life potion. So we will just display these ones and nothing more. Even if there are um, 20 squares in your real game, of course, we, you will have more items. Um, okay, bow, life potion. Cool. So how do we draw them? We will probably need some loop. We will loop on item names. So how do you loop? You, do you make a, a for loop on um, arrays like this in Lua? It, it's with uh, the, the hyper, hypers uh, function uh, for index item name in hypers item names. So for each element it will return two things. The index in that list, so one for the bow and two for life potion, and the item name, so the whatever value we, we've put here. Okay. So I'm not even sure if we really need the index, but uh, we have we have to to put something here. One convention, if you don't need it, is to call this variable underscore, which is just a perfectly valid uh, Lua identifier. And okay, so for each item, we want to to draw our item sprite. So maybe you remember that we have an entities slash items sprite that contains one animation for each item. So we have life potion, we have bow. And the directions of these items correspond to the variance of our item. Um, so here we only dis we will only need these two because the other items are not um, assignable. Well, we could still display them in, in the inventory and, and not um, allow the player to assign them to an item slot. Uh, but okay, draw items. So for each item, we well we win, we need to get the item itself. Game get item to first check if the player has that item. So let's get the variant that the player has of that item. And only if the variant is greater than zero we'll do something. And we will do what? We will... Uh, so yeah, like I said, we need this sprite, so we'll load it somewhere. 
item sprite. Um, sol dot sprite dot create entities slash items. Um, yeah, item sprite set animation. The name of the item is also the name of the animation, and the direction is the variant. Actually, the variant minus one, because direction start at zero here. And that's pretty much it. We can then draw our item onto DST surface. Um, yeah, let's draw them at some bad coordinates first, just to test. So of course nothing is drawn here because I don't have the bow, I don't have anything. Now I have the bow and, oops, item sprite is, the user, oh, I forgot to write draw. Sorry about that. Let's pick the bow again. Okay, so I have a slight piece of the bow here displayed at zero, zero. I don't even see the bow entirely, and that's because the origin of this sprite is usually um, 8 by 13 here. So I only see... So yeah, this point here is displayed at zero, zero of the screen. So I only see this little piece here. Um, so we'll fix that and we will, um, more importantly, fix the, yeah, display the bow on, on the correct square of the grid. Um, so to do that, we can again create some variables dstx, dsty, that we initialize at, um, for instance, 0, 0, or grid x grid y and then um, yeah so we are this time we are looping over this list and not over rows and columns but um, the idea will be pretty much the same we just have to detect when we are at the end of a line to know if we need to increase x or y so at the end of our loop, we can check if um, index modulo the number of columns is zero. It means that we are at the end of the line because index is one. So yeah, we do need the index. Index is one for the first one and then uh, two, three, four, five. So if we have drawn the item number five, then this condition becomes true. 5 modulo 5 is 0, so we go to the next line, to the next row. So we do the same code as, as that, and otherwise we increase the column. And I think that's it. So here are our draw items. At each frame we redraw items based on the game state, which actually is very unlikely to change during the pause menu. So one optimization would be to, again, uh, build the, the item surface also only once when we, um, when we start the pause menu. Not when we create the pause menu, but when we start it. But that's a small detail. Um, okay, it's still not displayed at the correct coordinates because I've kept 0, 0 here. I need DSTX and DSTY. I also need to fix the origin issue. I haven't fixed it yet, but let's see before that fix what happens. So my bow is displayed, but again, uh, it, it only starts with this small piece here at the top left corner of the 
square of the grid. So how to fix it? Well, we can we actually know the the origin. We can we can get it origin x origin y is uh, item sprite get origin so it will give you the origin of the sprite in its current state so with this animation and this direction you just need to display it with this offset and actually a little bit more than that because our item sprite is 16 by 16 but our square is a little bit bigger we have some margin here so it will be dstx plus origin x plus some margin uh, let's call it item margin oops we could compute it um, but we can also hard code it here because all our items are always 16 by 16 so let's just hard code it to 4 but yeah this tutorial is long enough so I, I don't want to annoy you even more with all of these computations okay cool my bow is now this time uh, perfectly centered in my square and if I get the life potion I also see it in the second square Okay, awesome. Um, we will stop for today. Um, this tutorial was uh, already long enough. We, I think we made the most annoying part of an inventory menu, which is all this um, tedious um, coordinates computations. But uh, we will continue this next time with a more interesting things like um, adding a, a cursor on our menu so that we can select items there maybe even display the names the name of the selected item and allow the player of course to assign an item to one of the two item slots here um, and another improvement is that we will want to um, probably display the amount of the item here like we do in the hand why not do it also in the inventory? Um, okay, some other improvements are possible. Of course, we, you can do a, a very much nicer UI. Here we are just displaying 20 uh, gray squares, but you can have a nice background with some some picture of or anything that you want. And um, yeah, also in real games, you you have we you will have more than an inventory in your menu. You will have some something uh, with multiple sub screens probably, and like an option menu, a map menu, and some other information about the game. So yeah, everything is possible. This was just one example of how to to make a small grid and uh, put item sprites there. But at least next time we will add the the cursor and the possibility to assign items to item slots thank you all for watching please join our discord if you need help or if you have some cool ideas and uh, see you next time bye